two minutes wherever you are whether you're following online or you are right here I want you to open up your mouth and worship Jesus just express what he means to you our worship and our fellowship is the Holy Spirit our fellowship is with the Spirit beholding Jesus you don't have to be motivated by anyone no one around you is the object of your worship only Jesus lift your hands if you can open your mouth and adore him open your mouth and reverence him there is no one like him open your mouth and give him praise call his name Jesus In my life, in my life. Father, tonight that is our prayer. That's why we have come from far and near. For everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you will take your place as Lord as king be enthroned not only in our praises and in our worship but in our hearts tonight I gather to experience you and tonight let no one leave the same let the mixture of your presence and your power and your word bring transformation let us see you tonight to the end that we will become as the image that is set before us to the end that we will be as you are thank you Jesus in this place come and take your place in this place the presence of Jesus is right here in this place I want your heart to be open tonight the Lord is here and he has come to visit us in a remarkable way. Can you lift your hands and ask him for something new tonight? Right where you are. 
in your living room, in your office, while you're driving your car? Can you just lift your hands and ask him for something tonight? Ask him to do something new, something special. Open up your mouth and pray. I can't hear you. Ask him for something. Ask him to do something. Make sure you are talking to him. Make sure you are talking to him. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. your name. You lift your hands to heaven. Worthy is your name. Let the lifting of your hands be like the evening sacrifice. Lamb of God.
Just wave your hands and adore him and worship him. Just wave your hands and bless him. His presence is here tonight. His glory is in this place. Sing that last part all together, worthy. All together. And personalize it tonight. Love all together, wonderful to me. To me, to my heart. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your great name. Thank you for your presence. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We really do. We love you tonight. We love you tomorrow. And we love you forever. Lord, let your word come to purify us, to sanctify us again. Tonight, let the sick be healed. Let your press be set free. Let men find rest in you tonight. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated. God bless you. Somebody say hallelujah. It's so good to have every one of us here again. And this is what you experience when you come here. The wisdom of the word of God. An encounter with his presence. And his power that he's able to do. And to work wonders in your life. And I trust that we will not go back the same today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to honor God for our mommy. Pastor Mrs. Aisha, she's here. Can we celebrate her? Thank you. Amen. And um, our dear Pastor Ima, the resident pastor right here. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. God bless you. Amen. I want to... I know mommy is not the type that likes talking outside. Um... Uh, and she didn't even know I would do this now. But I just feel in my heart that um, I should give her one, two minutes to just come and greet us. And um, release a blessing for us. She's been here again and again, year in, year out. And um, I think it will be good to we'll just hear a word or two from her. Can we celebrate God as she comes? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You caught me by surprise. I don't know what to say. But I just want to bless the name of the Lord. You know, for his faithfulness upon our lives. You may not know what it is to be in Christ Jesus. You may not know what it is. 
we are serving a living God and not a dead God. We are serving a God that can change lives. We are serving a God that can, you know, transform lives. You don't know what you have when you are a Christian. And don't look down on yourself. That you are seated here today. Maybe the next meal, you don't know how you will get it. Ah, our God is the all-sufficiency God. He is the only one that can transform life. He is the only one that can turn you from nothing to something. God is a great God. Our God is a great God. I just, I bless the name of the Lord for all of you. But then, the advice I normally have for people is that, you know, don't joke with what we have. Don't joke with what? With what you have. Don't joke with the word of God. Praise the Lord. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended not. I don't know your situation. The light of the word of God is able to transform you. If God can make me to, work, to be what I am today. I know what it used to be in the 80s. But for me to be standing today. Shows that God is what? God is real. And God is able to give you testimony. And he will give it to you today in the name of Jesus. Please give God, give her a big God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Never trivialize what you have. We have the word of God. We have his spirit in us. And I know many of us will not know mommy. Um, she she's a convert actually she gave her life to christ around 1991 i'm right i'm correct ma yes converted from you know islam to christianity and i'm so happy that uh, this is well over 30 years now right and she's strong in faith so i believe that's an encouragement for every one of us here amen especially for us the young ones to hold on to our faith and watch God do great and mighty things through us in Jesus name are we set for the word tonight so we'll begin or we'll continue rather the series we started last week and tonight 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 is going to be an amazing night uh, the word of God will come to instruct us to teach us for some of us to correct us uh, but most importantly I believe that there is a purifying ability of the Word of God in the life of a man that receives it with meekness. The Word of God is able to purify. The Bible says in Psalms 12, verse 8, I believe, that it is pure. The Word of the Lord is pure. And it has been purified and tested and tried seven times. In other words, it is perfection itself. When it comes, it searches into your life takes away the things that are not according to the image of Christ and it leaves you with the exact replication of who you are supposed to be in Christ and that's what I believe that the world will do and more so when the word of God is taught I want you to be sensitive of this one thing that under the atmosphere of the teaching of God's word spiritual things happen the word of God is the atmosphere for the spirit of God to move, to operate, and to function in the life of God's people. There are several encounters, impartations, healings, deliverances that happen when the word of God comes forth. It is only the word of God that creates a roadway for the anointing to be instrumental and to be operational in a place within a people or in the life of a person and that's the reason why when the word of god comes for don't get distracted just by the sound of the voice of the preacher open up your spirit because a lot of things happen in that moment and tonight i feel like some of us will be transported to higher dimensions in the spirit realm higher measures of grace is going to be offloaded on some vessels tonight in the name of jesus so we started a series last week the need for priesthood and um, we saw from scriptures that we have been made 
unto God as priests and kings. I try to define who a priest is by simply saying that a priest is an intermediate intermediary personality a priest is a mediator is a go-between is one that stands between divinity and humanity and that's what priesthood is all about uh, to secure the help the hand and the person of God to interfere within the realm of man and when God saved us in Christ Jesus, he gave us the identity of priests so that we can become the gangway for which heaven can invade this world and bring about the civilization that exists in God's realm so that men can understand and identify with the culture in the third heavens. This is why we have been called as priests we saw from the Old Testament that when the priesthood began with Aaron, um, there were several things that were the activities of priests. Part of which was prayer, the offering of prayer and sacrifices. And I told us last week that prayer is the spiritual or the primary medium of offering spiritual sacrifices we are going to talk about sacrifices in itself today but the first and initial sacrifice that every believer can offer to god is the sacrifice of prayer so prayer is not only because we have needs or we have supplications yes that's an aspect of prayer where we table our needs and our supplications to god for him to answer and for him to create possibilities in our lives that will bring us into the fulfillment of our requests but beyond that prayer is an obligation the bible says in luke chapter 18 verse 1 that men ought always to pray it is an obligation every man is sentenced to a life of prayer the reason is because when we pray we offer sacrifice to god and it is on the strength of a sacrifice that a spirit is invited to interfere in the realm of men that means that the number of times you find divine intervention or divine interference in your life is the number of times that you offer prayer to God and that is why out of every blessing that we have spiritually the only one that was given to us to be operational by an act of our will you don't have to be led by the spirit to do it though the spirit of god can lead you to do it but god made it um, friendly with our personality it's such a thing that you can start you can kick start with your mind with your will it's called prayer you don't have to be motivated by an external force to pray it's something that can come from within you Prayer is what strengthens every aspect of your life and your work with God. And I told us, or oh, I taught us three benefits of priestly prayer. I told us that prayer serves as a shield against temptation and evil, right? Number two, I told us that prayer is what secures the manifestation of our redemptive rights everything that god secured for you in christ jesus can only be made available or can only be brought into reality when you pray it is yours but it is prayer that channels it to begin to express itself and find expression or manifestation in your life whether it is healing whether it is deliverance whether it is wisdom whether it is power whether it is wealth and finally i told us that prayer is a medium by which we transport and translate spiritual possibilities from god's realm into this realm today we want to look at the second aspect of our teaching and i trust that it will go deeper tonight and i pray that god will give us understanding today if you are here say amen Malachi chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 the need for priesthood part 2 
and you can put in bracket offering up spiritual sacrifices offering up spiritual sacrifices as a subtopic Malachi chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 and then after that we'll look at the scripture we looked at last week first Peter chapter 2 verse 5 and he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old as in former years five and the last but there's no verse five okay let me read my Bible here all right and I will come near you for judgment I thought you didn't have verse five in your Bible and I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. So the Bible is giving us a scenario here. God is about to visit his people. But before he visits his people, the children of Israel, he starts first of all by visiting a particular tribe called the tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi, when the children of Israel came out of Israel of Egypt, uh, God separated one tribe out of the 12 tribes so that that tribe would stand as a go-between God and his people as the tribe that will stand as priest and offer up sacrifices and prayers on behalf of the people it was called the tribe of Levi and this scripture is giving us a scenario of divine visitation a season of revival is coming on his people and God says before I begin to do anything amongst my people I will first of all come as a refiner and a purifier to the sons of Levi and purify them as gold and as silver now if you have knowledge about what it means to be a blacksmith and the purification of metals you will understand that precious metals like gold and silver are taken through a lot of process for it to be purified for it to be purified means for it to be rid of impurities read of other elements materials that will not allow that metal um, be revealed in its brightest color gold and silver being the most precious metals and so for gold and silver to be purified it is taken through fire and god is saying that just the way gold and silver is taken through fire not so that it will be burnt but so that it can be purified to come out holy as gold and as silver god says i will do the same to my priest i will purify them i know that they are my priests they are men to sanctify my people they are men to offer prayers and sacrifices for my people they are men to stand as go between me and my people but even they themselves need to be purified first that means that a vessel that must be used by God must be taken through certain processes of purification before ever that vessel can be used and God says I will purify them as fire that means that in a season of revival not only are we supposed to experience the power of God to transform and the power of God to liberate and the power of God to walk signs and wonders and miracles we are also supposed to experience the power of God in a way that it purifies us. It comes to take out the things that are not of God, that have found their way into our life. So that when God looks at us, he sees the very image of his son. If you are with me, say amen. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5, where we read last week. 1 Peter chapter 2 
verse 5 and then verse 9. He said, You also as living stones have been built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So we have been called as priests to offer up sacrifices. And I like that the Bible says spiritual sacrifices. That means these sacrifices are either spiritually done or are physical acts that have spiritual implications. Did you hear what I said? You didn't hear what I said. Let me say it again. They are either they are either acts with spiritual implications or they are orchestrations that are spiritual so in the old testament they offered sacrifices of rams of bulls of cows they had to kill an animal and burn it for it to be offered to god but in the new testament god has put an end to that kind of sacrifice after the ultimate sacrifice of jesus christ yet the bible says that we have been called to still offer up sacrifices only that this time the sacrifices are spiritual that means they are either spiritually done or they are physical acts with spiritual implications the reason is because jesus christ put an end to one priesthood to begin another priesthood jesus christ put an end to the priesthood of aaron to begin the priesthood of melchizedek as the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 5 and in chapter 7 that he is a priest in the order of melchizedek and we have been begotten of him we are his kind that means we are going to continue that priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices verse 9 he says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a royal priesthood his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him this is now a kind of the sacrifice to the end that you may proclaim the praises now when the bible speaks of praises there is not speaking about utterances no the word praise is there in the original Greek can also be translated to mean virtue, attitude, character, expressions. So when he says that we are to proclaim the praises of him, he's not talking about praise the Lord, oh single, single. No, no, no. He's saying that we have been called to project and portray the personality of him that has called us out of darkness he brought us out of one system into another system that system is called his marvelous light and one thing the bible says light does is that light makes manifest light is supposed to reveal light is supposed to express if we have been called into his marvelous light we have been called to a lifetime of consistently showcasing and expressing the nature of this God who has redeemed us it's important to understand that before we go into the topic this night because we want to talk about offering up spiritual sacrifice what does it mean to offer a sacrifice what does it mean to offer up spiritual sacrifice why do we offer up those kinds of sacrifices it is important you know that because your dominion on earth like i taught us last week is dependent on how much of priesthood that you exercise that means everything that you will become and reveal physically on the earth is tied to the revelation of a reality or of an activity that you perform that has spiritual implications the Bible says that we will rule and reign on the earth. That is why he has called us as priests and kings. So for me to rule and reign on the earth as a king, 
for me to have dominion on the earth for me to live the very life of God on earth there has to be something about my priestly ministry as a believer that is consistent you see not so much is thought about this in mainstream church teaching but I tell you the truth if we must conform to what God is doing in our time we have to seek the deep things the church has been too shallow for a long time it's time for the church to begin to test of deep waters it's time for us to go beyond basic doctrines to the very things that are the core aspect of our faith things that will make your Christian experience distinct and different things that will bring to bear the very essence and the power of what it means to truly be a believer if you are with me say amen so we have been called as priests to offer up sacrifice so let's look at the life of a priest let's look at a scenario in scripture that best will explain what we are dealing with tonight Zechariah chapter 3 verse 6 to 7 I want to just give you an example an example that will give us a hint or a clue of what is required of us even as believers even as priests so let's look at an example in scripture then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying admonish means he was giving him a charge was giving him an instruction in other words if he must walk with God as a high priest this is an injunction that he cannot trivialize this is something he cannot break this is like rules of engagement that is being given to this man by the angel of the Lord thus says the Lord of hosts if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my command then you shall also judge my house the word judge there means reign or rule you will have rule over my house the house there was talking about the nation of Israel I know that because when you read Hebrews chapter 3 don't go there the Bible speaks about Moses who was faithful in all of God's house the house was speaking of the nation of Israel because Moses was called to lead Israel so when the Bible says Moses was faithful in God's house it meant he was faithful in discharging his leadership capacity he did everything that was required of him there was an organogram there was a scheme of work there was a modus operandi for Moses while he led God's people and the Bible says he was faithful that means he did everything according to pattern now an admonition is given to Joshua the high priest he says if you will walk in my ways and keep my command then you shall also judge my house in other words I will give you rule I will increase your authority I will increase your relevance and your essence amongst my people do we understand that if you are following say amen and likewise have charge of my courts I will give you places to walk among these who stand here now should I explain this or let's just go into our teaching these are you need these are this is a spirit talking <laughs> so you will need a kind of understanding to comprehend what this spirit is saying if you will walk in my ways what are the ways first of all the Bible says in the book of Psalms 103 don't go there just leave the scripture in verse 7 it says he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel and we know that the acts there speaks of the miraculous the mighty things that God wrought through Moses to the children or for the children of Israel but the Bible says what was exclusive for Moses was the revelation of the ways of God the ways there speaks of the principles the spiritual principles 
that were able to bring to bear the power of God to manifest those miraculous acts and signs. So the children of Israel saw Moses like a God, but they didn't know that Moses was operating by a formula that was spiritual. That every time he was able to bring to bear the manifestation of God's power, it was because something was revealed to Moses alone. It was called the ways of God. So for you to partner with a spirit, you must first of all be introduced to the ways of that spirit. And we are talking about the spirit of spirits, the father of spirits, the one called El Shaddai, the one called Elohim, the one that sustains all and is sustained by none, the one that existed before existence, the one that began before the beginning began. So we are talking about a spirit that is mysterious. And this spirit is talking to Joshua the high priest. He says, I want to give you authority. I want to increase your relevance. I want you to be a vessel that will bring to display my judgment, my power on earth. But then there is a rule of engagement. That means that, this is aside now, that means that as far as God is concerned, it's not just enough to be available for God to use you. Being available is not enough. It's just step one. Because you have several plates in your house, but you don't use all. Yes or no? But they are all plates. So being available is not enough, but then for us to be usable, there is a rule of engagement. There are things that you will have to walk with and walk by. There are, impli there are things that are supposed to become part of your life. There is a certain character, a mode. You will walk by certain rules that will be implicated or have implications on your livelihood. And God told Joshua, he says, if you walk in my ways and if you will keep my command the commands of god notice that the bible didn't say my advice or counsel it said commands that means these are non-negotiable negotiable rules or laws i know that there are believers who say oh jesus christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law enough of the old enough of the law we have been saved by grace. In the Old Testament, they had the law of Moses. And the reason why God gave those laws was because before they got into the promised land, God wanted to create a culture for them, a way by which they will live that will separate them from all the nations of the earth. Separate them and distinguish them as God's people. And so God gave laws to Moses that they had to walk by. But in the New Testament, yes, we have been saved by grace. We have been redeemed from the cause of the law. But in this new covenant, there is another system of law. It's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus just like your biological life operates by a law you know <laughs> what is a law first of all a law is a is a principle uh, with certain consequences when applied a law when obeyed can predict the outcome of the one that obeys it so biologically speaking your life in this body functions by certain laws that is the reason why you don't your systems are working perfectly and in order as you are listening to me that is the reason why the air that goes through your nose doesn't go to your stomach that's the reason why the food that goes through your mouth doesn't go to your lungs there is a law 
by which all these systems in your body are functioning so that they can function appropriately and consistently for you to be alive even so there is a law for your spirit man to walk by for you to truly live and experience the god life yes we were delivered from the laws of moses but we have been saved and brought into the law of the spirit of life that is in christ jesus and so there are commandments they say if you keep my command then you shall also judge my house meaning that i will give you rule amongst my people and likewise have charge of my courts when the bible speaks of the courts of god because god is king every king has a court where they sit down where matters are decided according to the wisdom of the king according to the constitution of the kingdom now god is who is a spiritual king and who rules over heaven and earth is talking to a man that if you walk in my ways and keep my commands i will do something to you that will make you operate as a superhuman i will give you charge in other words i will give you authority in my courts that means when i am deciding a matter amongst men i will give you the permission to interfere in that decision do you understand that that's a man god is talking to how many of you want to get to that point of extreme power where god gives you operational license both in the spirit realm and in the physical that means that if anything must change it will be based on the permission or the license that you issue it that means when god wants to decide the destiny of a family or of a nation god will have to consult you why because he has given you charge in his courts in a law court there is a section of that court they call the jury the judge cannot give any judgment or pass any judgment without consulting the decision of the jury in fact the judgments that the judge will pass is influenced by the decision of the jury you see them seated quiet not saying anything but your faith in that court is based on their decision now god is talking to a man that this is what i want to do for you i want to bring you to a point where where matters are decided in my court let me give you an example in the book of first kings 22 leave this scripture the bible gave us a scenario god was tired of a king that was ruling his people that king was an evil king and god wanted to do away with the king but you know god could not kill the king even though the king had committed evil idolatry done everything that was against god god could not kill the king ask me why i hope you know the bible says the lord kill it and make it alive first samuel 2 verse 4 the lord kill it and the lord make it that's not old testament that's the nature of god that's who he is he what kill it swallow that one because it's true he kill it and he can still kill today and i tell you the truth this year 2022 <laughs> god is going to walk through nigeria and he will show us an example of his judgment you just watch and see the lord kill it and make it alive but this king god could not kill him why how come a human became so powerful that god could not slay that human you want to know why the reason was because he was anointed king and the anointing is god himself god could not slay him because he had an authorization from god to function as king and based on that authorization even god was restrained that's why he says he suffered no man to do them wrong he rebuked kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophet touch not means including god 
<laughs> so God needed to do away with the king, but he couldn't kill him because the guy was anointed. And then there was a meeting in heaven. The court came together. Ah, I pray that somewhere in this year we will talk about that. We'll talk about the courtroom of heaven. I will begin to examine the, the different characters, the different personalities that stand in that court. And if you understand how that court operates, you will enter a place of dominion where your prayer can change things. Your prayer can restrain the hand of God that is even released. Your prayer can force God to act in something he's not even interested in. That's a higher dimension of prayer. That's more than ba 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 ba. That's the kind of prayer we need to pray if we must see change in our communities, in our society, in, in, in an office, an organization where God brings you. That's the kind of prayer that can command creation. So God summoned that court and he started talking to all the spirits. He said, Who will go and convince this king to go and die? I want to kill him but i can't kill him but i need him to die so we have to do it in a way that somebody has to go and convince him to enter and die and different spirits were saying the same different things and then a spirit came as the bible told us he came before god all this one was happening in heaven and the king was on earth having a good time just the way the rich fool the parable of the rich fool oh god that's friends we have to be spiritual don't live your life by so you know you know based on this three-dimensional world no there are things happening beyond this realm the bible spoke about the rich fool he had a bumper harvest he said wow you have harvested so much he said now my soul sit down eat and make merry and then build bigger bands where you will store all these things in other words so that you can continue eating unknown to that guy in the realm of the spirit someone was talking and the person say hmm, because of that statement you will die this night the same way that Cain killed abel and he did it and cleaned his hands i thought that was all not knowing that he was being watched from somewhere and instantly judgment was passed from that place against him and the spirit came to god and told god he said i'll go and be a lying spirit to all his prophets and god said wow that's good go and you'll succeed and the king didn't know that his 400 plus prophets were prophet lying not prophesying you know <laughs> when you lie and claim god said his prophet lie it's not prophesy may god not bring us to that point oh in the body of christ may god not bring us to a point where all the ministers around us are saying things that god didn't say may god not bring us to that point and you know the story the, the, the prophets prophesied him into his death now god is talking to joshua he says i want to give you charge the same way spirits have a say in my court you a man i want to bring you to that place where before i do anything in your city i will come and consult you like god did to abraham how many of you want to live in that place when nothing happens in your family without your permission without your knowledge He says, and I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. If you read King James, he says, stand by. He was speaking about angels. I don't have time to explain it to you. He was speaking about angels there. Hallelujah. So we have been called as priests, just like Joshua was called. And we have been called to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Because on the strength of those sacrifices, God can intervene and interfere amongst men. And his will can find expression. I'll give you two of the sacrifices and we are done tonight. Number one.
the sacrifice of consecration 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 is from the word consecrate it means to dedicate to set apart or to separate an individual or an object for the service or for the worship of God anything and anyone that God will use must go through a process called consecration there are certain rights that are applied to that individual or to that thing that separates it to be used of God that means God cannot use everything until that thing is consecrated and it's funny that one of the sacrifices that we are to offer up is a sacrifice of what consecration Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 in other words we are supposed to come to a point where we are separate we are set apart we are dedicated by certain acts certain rights certain things lifestyle that distinguishes you things that others will do and you will not do or things that you will do that others don't have to do that's what makes up consecration he said i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to god you present your bodies and then he begins to give the conditions for presenting your bodies that means just any kind of presentation will not go with god you know those days when we were small in primary school if your friend is eating a snack or something and you are hungry you beg the person isn't it isn't it you beg for small isn't it and there was this phrase we used to say then when you have somebody who is begging but who is who is making the begging look like he's demanding he's adding rights to his begging we say a beggar does not have a choice that means a beggar receives anything good bad ugly whether you give him one stick of the biscuit or you cut it into two and give him or you cut it into 16 don't laugh some of you are like that and they beg you you cut it into 16 1 over 16 that's why you practice fraction and they take one and put it in the person's mouth amen so god now is like that person begging for biscuit and paul is saying i beseech you in other words i beg you therefore brethren by the mercies of god i'm begging you that you present offer give your body you know why i use the word present because for a gift or a, for something to be called a present there is a way it is wrapped and given that's why it's called a present and now the bible says present your bodies but then all of a sudden this beggar has choice he said don't just present it anyhow present it as a living sacrifice now i'm used to a sacrifice being dead because the first example of a sacrifice we have from scripture was when animals were killed that means you have to kill that animal it loses its life to be a sacrifice yet the bible is talking about living sacrifice this is a figure of speech this is what oxymoron because a sacrifice is not supposed to be alive but the bible is saying that your body is supposed to be a sacrifice that is alive in other words live as a dead man what's the first character of a dead man he has lost consciousness of his physical world do you understand tonight another characteristics of a dead man he has no choice what to do to him and god is saying i need your body 
when God says your body is not just talking about this body alone he is referring also to your life in this body in other words as long as you are alive in this flesh God is saying I need you to live as one that is sacrificed unto me in other words you will lose your choice your ability to choose for yourself you will lose consciousness to relate and enjoy certain pleasures in your world your physical world live separated and surrender to me a living sacrifice and then he says another condition is you must be holy everybody say holy i know you don't like that word but you have to say it because the bible says we are holy because god is holy say holy the word holy is from the word w-h-o-l-e whole it means complete that means give me you completely a man of god said the price for all of god is all of you that's the reason why the first time god lived and walked on earth was in jesus christ because the bible says in colossians 2 verse 9 that in him dwells the fullness of the godhead bodily that means when jesus was alive and started his ministry all of god was in that body as he walked around my question tonight is will there be a replay of the same reality in our time will there be a man or a woman that will bring a replay of what happened during the time of jesus christ where all of god can be resident in one man where creation can see and behold the beauty and the nature of god because of one life walking on earth it's something you have to think about this night i know this teaching is not for everybody this teaching is for a few people that really want to go deeper with god it says holy complete acceptable to god which is your reasonable service in other words you are to be consecrated this is what it means for you to be separated and set apart for god this in itself is a sacrifice required of you you are supposed to live separated and dedicated unto god that means god must have a say in everything that surrounds your life that means jesus christ will not only be your savior but will now become your lord because when you were saved he was your savior but he was not automatically your lord it is consecration that makes him your lord lord means owner the one that has complete right oh i know this is a very uncomfortable teaching this night i know and god says this is a sacrifice that is pleasing and acceptable to me that a man lives completely separated to me live for me in other words give me your life so that i can use it to express my character verse 2 another dimension of the consecration no this is verse 2 of romans 12 and be not conformed to this world you know and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of god in other words it's either you are living for god or you are living for the world the world has a civilization it has a culture by which it operates but in order for you not to be conformed to the world and live by its standard you must allow god transform your mind god must take hold of your operating system which is your mind because as a man thinketh in his heart that means god wants to colonize how you think and you must understand that the life of your thoughts are informations it is the information you receive that governs your thought space and it is your thoughts that creates your reality the way you dressed and came today was already a reality in your mind first you saw it here before you acted you acted it out and god being a wise god says that is the place i want dominion that's the place i want authority don't only give me your body give me your mind give me your operating system give me your central processing unit give me your center of choice because your mind which is where your thoughts are your thoughts controls how you feel 
which is your emotions when you think about someone as a bad person or you see that person in bad light you will naturally feel awkward towards that person your thoughts control your emotions and your emotions influence your decisions which is where your will is so god in wanting to influence your decision says i want to start from your thought that's where consecration is that means that wearing a white cassock and serving as an altar boy in a parish, in a parish is not consecration i can be doing that and in this place is babylon what is babylon figurative of the world system kind of songs you listen to the kind of information you listen to i saw something on 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 on, on the internet recently and i regretted even seeing it I, and it was just a few seconds video about a lady that was dancing i have not seen that kind of dance for dancing with her stomach can you imagine that And I just thought to myself, the only creature on earth that walks on their stomach or moves on their stomach is who? The serpent. So she calls it a dance mode or a dance step. But what she's doing in her dance is offering worship to a deity called the devil. You know, we call it dance step. It's dance step. You see, we have to screen many of the things we have copied and brought into the church. I'm not preaching doctrine. I'm not preaching denomination. I'm talking consecration from scripture. We have to screen everything. Where did we get the dance we are dancing? Where did we get the songs we are singing? Now you cannot sing a praise song without adding a worldly, a secular groove to it. That means we are giving expression to a different civilization. And she was just moving with so much energy. I had to just pacify myself because that place looked like a bar when I saw it. And I said, Lord, have mercy. So it starts from your mind. Consecration begins there where you allow the word of god to filter your lifestyle where you deliberately allow the culture that the bible creates to become your living expression philippians chapter 2 he says is it verse 13 or 15 now he says among in, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation amongst whom we shine as light Jesus was praying for his disciples. He said they are of the world, but they are not of the world. You want to walk in priesthood. You want to have dominion like God was promising Joshua there. You want to come to a level of authority and power. It, it will cost you. There is a price for that. The price is consecration. You will not live like every man. You have to be sold out. In the Old Testament, there was a group of people called Nazarites. It was a culture in Israel that a Nazarite was to live naturally separated and dedicated unto God. And so there were rules that came with that kind of individual. For instance, they would not cut their hair or their beard. They would not drink wine. Who doesn't like wine here? Okay, who has not tasted wine here before? A devil is a liar you have tasted somehow on christmas day somehow you went somewhere okay how many of us love wine yeah i like wine i like wine good wine not the one that makes you high 4.7 percent two pastors went somewhere they went to visit a deacon or an elder rather in of a church in his house and the elder brought two bottles of wine wine was one was non-alcoholic the other one had 4.7 percent and he said pastor we can just mix it you know we can mix it this one is stronger so we can mix it and he's an elder my god 
I hope they have not mixed for you too. The way you are laughing like this. You can mix it. And when you drink that kind of mixture. Did you read in Isaiah chapter 1 when God was making a lamentation about the backsliding nature of his people? He spoke about the servants of God that had also backslided. He said their wine has been mixed with water. Ah. So he can prophesy, but his spirit has been contaminated. So why is he's, he's not he's no longer motivated by the Holy, he's no longer inspired by the Holy Spirit, he's now motivated by gain, by, by other things. But he's saying the truth, but the source has been adulterated. There was a man called Samson. He was also to live as a Nazarite. And what brought him down before his enemies was that he broke every consecration. Friends, if God seems to be absent in your life, check your consecration. This is not law. You say, don't bring God. Mm -mm. This is this is reality this is Christianity one time David was traveling with his servants his, his soldiers and they went to a land of priests and they were looking for bread and there was no bread they told them the only bread that is here is the bread dedicated to the presence of God and the priest told him we will not give you this bread except there were many other laws who but because of emergency, the priest had to just do subsidy for them. The priest had to compress it. So, okay, at least if you and your men have not touched women for three days, you can eat this bread. And you know, the Bible speaks of the word of God as bread. That means that there's a deeper revelation of God's word that you cannot touch until a certain level of purification and holiness is part of you. Let me tell you the truth. Holiness still remains the foundation for exploits in the kingdom. I'm telling you. Romans chapter 1 verse 3 says, Jesus was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. What made him powerful was the code of consecration. The code of consecration. 2 Corinthians 6 16 to 18 second corinthians 6 16 this is one of my most interesting scripture and what agreement has the temple of god with idols for you are the temple of living god of the living god so god is not asking being that you are the temple now the temple is not this building being that you are the temple now, he's saying, what agreement have you with idols? And when we talk about idols here, we're not just talking about idols you bow down to alone. There can also be idols in the heart of a man. Those things that a man reverences more than God. Those things that a man can keep God aside to do. Anything that occupies the space that God should occupy. Or anything that can contend with God in your life has become an idol. One of those days in our workers meeting, I mean, you remember, right? You were holding that our baby. What's her name? Um, Hepzibah. And I, we decided to do a little play. So I took 20 naira from my pocket and I gave the baby. And the baby looked at me like this. This is a baby that is not up to a year old. How many months? Six, seven, thereabout. I took 20 naira and gave her. She was looking at me like this. Then I withdrew my hand and then I brought 1,000. As I was bringing it out, she stretched her hand. So you see that the nature of sin is in man. David say, in sin did my mother. Greed is, is part of man, is, is there. And so idol can be when something or someone takes space that only God should take. In fact, anything you cannot do without outside God has become an idol. Even music can be an idol. Somebody say, hey, I can't do without music. I can't do. So his worship is only channeled by music. He doesn't understand worship. His worship is not deep. It's only redeeming. 
Because the first time worship was, was used in scripture, it was when a man was asked to kill his son. Genesis 22, God told him, he said, go and offer your son on the mountain, kill him. And Abraham told the servants, he said, I and the lad will go yonder and worship. How do you call killing of your only son that you waited 25 years for worship? That's the depth of worship. There are four dimensions of worship. The depth, that's another day. When you understand it, you will now know why some people don't need to, do, to struggle to command the presence of God. They don't need a service. This is the root secret, consecrations. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Take it up by one semitone and play major. Next verse, we are reading to verse 18. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Look at look at the look at the rules of engagement. He said, Come out, then be separate. How will you be separate? It means your lifestyle would demarcate you from the others. Why? Because you are a temple. It is the content inside of you that would determine how you carry yourself. I told one of our dear ladies one time, I said, do you know why God made you beautiful? She said, no. I said, God made the container beautiful because he put a more precious content. But a lot of ladies worship the container more than the content. It's when you know you are carrying something expensive that you will put it in a precious container. No, be so. So when God gives me a beautiful or a handsome body, it's not to sell it to immorality. I'm speaking man and woman. Play major. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Next verse 18, last verse. And I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the almighty god so god desires intimacy with us he wants to come to a point where he becomes one with us he wants to come to a point where he is fused his divine life and our human life comes together god wants you and him to be two inseparable entities but the price for that intimacy is consecration he said come out from among them where is God calling you out from today? Come out from amongst them. As you hear the sound of my voice, come out from... He was not talking to sinners. He was talking to believers. So being a Christian alone is not enough. Consecration must become our daily expression. It must become our lifestyle. That it must become obvious that this man is separated the bible says in daniel chapter 1 verse 8 that daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat he was a government official that was supposed to be his dish but he was willing to sacrifice his comfort why because of a cause mind you the same god he was trying to live for had abandoned them and allowed the king nebuchadnezzar to invade their city their nation and take them so there was for some people they'll say i was the need to still live holy again when god has forsaken us but not so for daniel it was a lifestyle so consecration means you will be separated from and separated to you will be brought out of some things and brought into some things certain things will now become the norm for you it's not so with every other person god will not demand that from everybody but he demands that from you you will have to consecrate you will consecrate to a life of prayer can i tell you something your first definition as a man of god or as a woman of god if you are called into any kind of ministry is your consecrations There has to be certain things that God demands you do that others don't do. No matter how convenient 
or inconvenient when you want to serve god and work with god that word convenience should be deleted from your dictionary somebody said ah, but why should it be like that must we always suffer was it convenient for jesus to carry that cross and the shame and die on the cross was it convenient for god for the first time to turn his back on his son was it convenient even when he died he was released to go down to hell oh you need maybe during easter if god permits i'm going to preach something about that the travail of christ where the bible says in isaiah that he shall see the, the travail of his soul and be satisfied so jesus suffering was not only on the cross when he died and went down to hell he suffered there too and that's he suffered till god was satisfied the satisfaction there meant his suffering was enough to pay for the redemption of man so if it was not convenient it would definitely not be convenient to be consecrated but if you want to walk in power if you want to walk in grace if you want to see the glory of god radiate through your life i'm telling you you cannot ignore consecration the bible says no man can serve two masters or be loyal to two he say he must leave one and serve the other or be loyal to one and despise the other he say you cannot serve god and mammon lord i will bow to you to no other god but you I will worship you, nothing hands have me, but you alone. I will lay down my idols, I will lay down my idols, and gods that have me, the ones that have taken my heart. Lord, we will bow, Lord, we will bow to no other God but you. Bow means I will surrender, that I let go of certain things. I know there are many people, many well-meaning believers, they love God, but they love something else you can like different things but one of the characteristics of love is that it is jealous love demands loyalty you cannot say you love this woman as your wife and then treat another woman better than her or treat another woman like her That's why I say that a man shall leave his father and mother and do what? Cleave means he submit himself. You were the first boy in your house, first born. You never did any work. They were always sweeping for you. You are the lion of the tribe of the house. But now the Bible says you drop all that lion, lion hood and you submit yourself to a woman. Say, Apostle, now wow, just like that. That is it too. That's the reason why you die to succeed in marriage let me tell you especially for those of us who are young and who are still single enjoy your singleness you are enjoying your liberty you can do whatever you like do how you like but the moment you get married no the bible says in second Kings 17 it was speaking about the depraved state of israel the backsliding state of israel he said they loved God and serve other gods. And that's, if we are not careful, that's what's happening to our generation. We, we, are, we, are, we have managed to somehow bring God together with things. He said they loved God and served other gods. So a bank manager will go to his pastor when they promoted him to be a manager for prayers on sunday morning even do thanksgiving cook rice and everything 
and then that Sunday night is in a shrine carrying calabash with, with feather on his mouth and you know because they think that when they bring money to the church God loves givers God does not love giver God loves a cheerful giver eh? there are times God rejected stuff he said your money perish with you but you must understand consecration in fact let me tell you something all of these things we teach in church giving this and that will not make sense if we have not understand the basics called consecration otherwise jesus will not look at that widow and say she gave more than all of them so we have to we have to correct this thing before we teach people about giving this giving i know yeah we it's good to serve the lord with your your, your resources and all of that but you yourself god takes no pleasure in a temple dedicated to idols of food that has been dedicated to demons it has to be you it has to be you first tell your neighbor it has to be you first Consecration. Consecration. Number two, and then we'll pray. Spiritual sacrifices required of us from Scripture as believers. In order for us to walk and function as priests. Number two, obedience to divine commands. Obedience. If you have understood consecration, you have to understand obedience. The secret of obedience is in a word called willingness. Now that you have been consecrated to God, then out of your will, you decide to obey. This is not God forcing you. You willingly comply with divine instructions, even when they are not convenient. For instance, it's not convenient sitting here the last few hours. Isn't it? But this is obedience. Willingness. Willingness is what measures your obedience. That's the reason why, as far as God is concerned, delayed obedience is not obedience where you don't do it when god said you should do it how god said you should do it and with what god said you should do it that's not obedience and in my definition delayed obedience is disobedience yes sir delayed obedience is what that's why it's called this delayed it's an act of your will this is what priesthood is all about that you willingly decide that God will use you as a medium as a tender as a transactional system in the realm of men so you it is it becomes willing for for you to pray when the Spirit of God wakes you up by 12 midnight and say pray you have two options at that time I hope you know you can decide I'm tired already let me sleep and God will not do anything about it because you decided it unlike Satan that doesn't wait for your will he tries to manipulate your will God doesn't want to manipulate your will he wants you to give him yourself willingly trade your life to obey him so god wakes you by 1 a.m and he say pray and you know you are tired but if you must obey the holy spirit who has become lord over your life becomes a sacrifice obedience 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 is coming under the influence of divine government coming under the influence of the government of God of the authority of God of Elohim obedience is a call to partnership 
Obedience is not a call to slavery. It's a call to partnership. Priesthood is God interfering amongst men. The system that allows God to interfere. I say so when God wants a man to obey him, he doesn't, he's not trying to enslave that man. He's seeking for partnership. Let me show you an example in scripture. Job chapter 36 verse 10 to 12. Every time you are faced with an option to obey God, you are being invited to a place of partnership. God wants to intervene in your life. He wants to move in your life. He wants to move through you. He wants to move in your resources, in your finances. He wants to move in your spiritual space. But something must legitimize his operation because it's a partnership. It is no longer just up to God. It is up to God and you. The spirit and the bride says come. It's a partnership. It's a joint work. So if you refuse to pray, there's nothing God can do. The darkness will continue in your family. Not because God cannot take it away, but because God must be legitimized to act. And your obedience is the license you issue to him. He said he also opens their ear to instruct to instruction and commands that they turn from iniquity. Go on. If they obey and serve him, what will happen? They shall spend their days in what? Talk to me. In what? And their years in what? So if you want prosperity, this is the condition. Yes, it's a benefit. It's a right to enjoy in the kingdom. But even that right has to be unlocked by certain obligations. The fact that the money is your money doesn't mean you can get it whenever you want. You have to take something called a check with the authorized signature which is your own for it to be validated in the bank to take what is your own obedience is the is the heavenly check to cash in into god's possibilities if they obey and serve him a lot of believers think god should just sovereignly move in their life listen to me let me tell you something especially about finances god is not a money doubler he's a miracle worker if you want God to translate you from impoverishment and poverty to prosperity, there are rules of engagement. There is a path you will walk by. There are instructions you will comply with that will legitimize the hand of God to come and make prosperity your reality. It's called obedience. That's why the last time you obeyed God is the last time you saw his hand. If you came here tonight or you are listening online and you are desperate in need of the hand of God to come in for you, change your prayer and ask the Lord, Lord, what must I do? Obedience. Go to verse 12. Let me show you another thing there. He said, but if they do not obey, what will happen? Talk to me. What will happen? And they shall... The, the Bible didn't show God there. That means God will not be responsible for the predicaments or the consequences of disobedience. There are a lot of people who are today 10 years behind where God intends for them. It's not every suffering that is a trial of your faith. No. Some sufferings may be as a result of disobedience. There are families that are enslaved under generational curses. You know why? Because there was a generation that swore allegiance to Satan. There has to be another generation in that bloodline that rises in complete obedience and loyalty to God for that cause to become broken. And until that is done, there is nothing God can do. The Bible says even Jesus himself, the death that he died, he did it by obedience. The Bible says, I'm being found in the likeness of man. He humbled himself and subjected himself to obedience, even to the death of the cross. It wasn't convenient, but he had to do it. Just because God is almighty didn't mean that he could just stand up and say, sin is cast out from humanity. No, there was a process that was, that was initiated. Obedience. Obedience is the greatest secret for the miraculous. Let me tell you the truth. 
you want to see miracles obedience not prayer the wedding at Cana when God turned water when Jesus turned water to wine Mary asked Jesus Jesus said my time has not come Mary went to the servants very wise she didn't go to other guests the Bible says she went to the servant they had a heart of service they were willing for you to be a servant means you were willing to serve and Mary knew these are the ones that are likely to to write the check of obedience for Jesus to manifest who he is here even Jesus was handicapped in a place until obedience showed up she told them whatever he says do most of the stunning miracles in scripture that Jesus performed happened after obedience the miracle of five loaves and two fishes feeding it 5,000 people it happened because a boy decided to give Jesus his lunch when was the last time God gave you an instruction and you obeyed? And let me tell you something. You see, when God wants to work with a man and use that man, he will take you through the tests of obedience. When consecration is complete, it goes into obedience. So he will come and test your desire for spirituality by telling you for the next seven nights, wake up by 12 and pray. God knows that it is unnatural to pray. But he will ask anyway because he wants to see if you are willing to sell your own decisions to obey his will at all costs and you know those kind of prayers you will not pray and feel the holy ghost oh. in fact the first night when you stand up to pray you will yawn five times in one minute have you been there before you will wait for the holy ghost to come oh it's like he's there but he's standing one side looking at you Ba, 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 or like some of our prayer brother ba, 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 ba. God will say continue like that for seven days and then day one, day two, day three day four he's so tired you know sometimes sometimes I have to I sleep on the edge of the bed you know why? so that when it's that time if my body doesn't want to stand up, I have a way of using this hand with my last strength. That's obedience. So God will not partner with you to do it. And push myself and fall. Maybe when I fall on the ground, consciousness will come to pray. You, that, you, you will take some dangerous steps to obey God. It's a price you will pay. Because that man that brought witchcraft into your family, go and ask the sacrifices. Go and ask the prices they pay. And in the demonic world, they pay more prices. That's the reason why darkness seems to be so much in the globe. You know why? Please be seated. The reason is because it seems like we have more people obeying the devil than we have more people obeying God. That God cannot bring the burden of a city to a man. Every time you pray, it must be your own needs. God, favor me. God, work miracle. And that's good. God wants to do it for you. But when was the last time you went to pray and you, you decided, God, I don't have prayer points. Today is your prayer point. I want to pray. And God said, okay, thank you. Well, my prayer point is to take you three months to pray it. You know, I told you during the Super Sundays that God doesn't have emotions. He uses your emotions to express his, how he feels. So you discover that that body doesn't leave you. Why are you praying? You don't know. But unknown to you, you are interceding on behalf of a city that is about to be enslaved by darkness. Death is about to capture a family or a territory. And God is looking for obedient men that can stand. Because that is priesthood. And he finds man, one man. And that one man has to pay the price for which death will be restrained. You now see why the people that God is using are few. And we, are, we have come to a point where we want to celebrate superstars and supermodels in the kingdom. But God is looking for an army. An army of men and women that are bounded by their obedience. By an act of your will, you become a slave to God. When he has finished the prayer test, he will now enter money. Money test. 
January, he came and said, give your salary all. And the day the alert came, your heart skipped two, two beats. Because you began to think of the next 28 days or 30 days, how do I cope? And you know how God will do it? Eh? You see, that's the reason why God works miracles, not magic. The raw material for every miracle is your obedience. He uses what is in your hand to work the miracle. So God will not show you the provision he has made until you obey and give that salary. But some of us will want to make false provisions for ourselves. If I give this salary, eh, I will meet my friend, we will patch your own salary. Some of you, even before you, you, you send the money, you send, you start sending texts. Say, I'm broke, I'm seeing my period, oh, help me. Oh. And then February came, when he thought he would enjoy his salary, because God took January salary. God will now say, okay, when you pay the tithe, give 70% to this pastor. And when you took the 70% to pastor that Sunday, pastor called you to his office and blasted you for coming late on Tuesday. And you are there holding your 70%. Is it God that will flog now or this pastor will flog? Have you been there before? You think you'll be given a Grammy award for obeying God? That's what Jesus faced when he was carrying the cross. When he hung on the cross. He thought that they would, everybody would know he was doing this for humanity. What did they tell him? They say, ah, you saved others. Save yourself. When he cried out, Eloi, Eloi. My God, my God, they say, ha, he's calling for Elijah. He will do the tests. And many Christians have failed that money test. You know why? Mammon is their God. All that they are pursuing God for is money. Nobody is interested in pursuing God out of love. It's because of money. Out of every five believers you see, three to four are looking for God because of what he can give. Service is no longer tied to our love for him. It's no longer tied to our willingness to advance his kingdom. What has he not done for us that we should not do for him? Is now what we can get. That's the reason why those kind of believers look at God as a money doubler. So they give 100 naira and expect miracle money for 10,000 naira to come. That's a lie now. That's a lie. That's the reason why I believe in miracle money, but I don't pray it always. You know why? God is not your magician. Even miracle, even miracle money operates by a principle. That person that sent you that money had to obey God to do it. For you to get a miracle, somebody obeyed God. Many Christians have failed that test. So they pay their tithes and nothing happens that month. Or they go through crisis and they wonder, why will God allow all these things to happen? The, the Bible now says in Romans chapter 8 verse 16, it said, therefore we are children. And if children, we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. He said, if we suffer with him, in verse 17, we shall be glorified with him. Did he not speak about the fellowship of his suffering in Philippians chapter 2, of chapter 3, verse 10? Many Christians, I want to stop here. Many Christians have failed the money test. The Lord said this one to me during the week. He said, many Christians have failed it. So God is looking for people that will command kingdom wealth. But we are few dead people. Because God will not bless you just for yourself alone. He's looking for people that will carry his body. He's looking for people that are ready to be committed. That's why before you can give God, you must give yourself first. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul was talking about the church in Macedonia. He said they gave, even in their poverty, they still gave much. Why? Why were they this sacrificial? He said because they first gave to God themselves. So the man has decided that he himself is sold out to God. He's li if he's alive, he's alive for God. Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. But a lot of Christians, mammon has seized their heart. So you find them holding back. They struggle. I'm not, I'm not telling you this so that you can come and sow seed. We don't do that here, you know, but. Sometimes I even wish that our offering is after the message. 
so that after this message no offering take your offering and go or we'll put the basket at the door there cast your offering as you are going then we will now see obedience we will see those who know that offering is not just because god will bless them but it's because it's a worship to god because of the value i have for god because of how i honor god i cannot appear before him empty and the offering i give tells the quality and the value of my reverence for god it's obedience there are many other tests many other tests of obedience but if we want to see authentic priesthood in the body of christ we need men that must obey god we need women that are ready to go all out when god sends you to a village for your youth service you don't try to walk it back because you want to walk it back but you go there finding the will of god for you there obedience tonight we are going to go to god we are going to pray we are going to reconsecrate to him again i believe that there is grace god is giving tonight for all the times that we have failed him as i speak now i can just see in the hearts of many people instructions lying in our hearts that have not been fulfilled things that have not been obeyed can God bring us to a point where we become prompt in carrying out his will, even when it will cost us? To lift the name of Jesus is heavy, is expensive. For God to be glorified, men must pay price. When he said, if I be lifted high, I will draw men. He was not talking about lifting him high in praise and worship, no. What he meant in that scripture was, if I die on the cross, if I be lifted high, it will cost you something some of you before you migrate from where you are to your original calling and election of grace god will check the register of obedience if you didn't obey him as an intercessor you will not obey him as a prophet because if you don't know what it means to serve his will in the place of prayer and labor in the secret you will not know what it means for god to show you things and tell you keep quiet till the appointed time People just think the anointing is magic. You can just touch it and walk in it. Now, lie you. That, if, it, if that's how it is, absolute power corrupts absolutely. It will kill you. It is obedience. It is obedience. That's why Paul will stand and say, Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks, the scars. That's the reason why Abraham was such a powerful man. Abraham was powerful. Abraham was the first man to first bend God to a, a, a transaction. God said, I have come down to go and see if the, what I've heard about Sodom and Gomorrah is as what I, I am hearing in heaven. And I will destroy them. And Abraham said, will God slay the righteous? Abraham began to bargain with God. And everything he said, God accepted. As though a man was controlling God. No, it was his obedience that was regulating God. When you obey God consistently, Abraham had a track record before God of obedience. That's why, even when Hagar and Ishmael were thrown out of the house and they went to the wilderness, the Bible says there was no water. Hagar, I say this and we'll pray. Hagar put Ishmael somewhere and she went another place so that she will not see the child die and the bible says hagar lifted her soul and wept yet the bible said god heard the voice of ishmael who was weeping hagar who did god hear ishmael you know why it's not ishmael god was hearing it was abraham god was hearing it was abraham god was hearing for god to come to a point where he looked at the man he said i swear by myself in blessing friends you know you want your prayer to be powerful be obedient acts 5 32 it says that god gives the holy spirit to those that obey him so that when you stand and say in the name of jesus 
Even demons will know that the Son of God has spoken. Can you rise on your feet? We are about to pray this time. Tonight's message is not a condemnation. It's a wake-up call. It's a desperate cry of the Spirit. God is looking for men and women in this generation. It's an admonition that has come to us so that we can align ourselves to what God intends to do. And if you know that you are willing to surrender to Him tonight and ready to let go of certain things, to come into another level of intimacy with God, I want you in the next 60 seconds to lift your voice and talk to God. Based on what you have heard, lift your voice. Some of you will need to surrender. Some of you will need to let go of certain things. Some of us will have to repent of all the times that the Holy Spirit moved you and you were not willing to obey. Some of us, this is our night of consecration. You have now found the missing key. You have found the reason why your priesthood is not powerful. You have found the reason why you pray, but it seems like your prayer does not, seem, does not secure the extent of the hand of God that is needed. In the cross, in the cross, in my glory, ever, still my wrath, Are you talking to him? Rabanska bebe bena noska beti kibili kabanda enanske dia sabala dena kabana nande elegonska bena nakabala do sabatoska bente kabresko bina mahula tekani abarates evinanske dina kabanda. You want to see the power of God move in your life. You want to be a vessel unto honor. The Bible says, if a man therefore project himself, you want to see God do mighty things through you. You want to be a system of divine help, of divine intervention in a realm of men. Then we must offer up spiritual sacrifice, sacrifice of consecration, sacrifice of obedience. <laughs> In Jesus' name. The Lord is just telling me this, and we are going to pray tonight. This is what the Lord is telling me. Some of us, we love God. Truly, we sincerely love Him. 
If you don't love God, you will not be here. You will not have stayed this long. But it seems as though we share our love for God with other things. And this night, as you cry before God, if you can mention those things that you know within you have contended for the place of God in your life, mention it before God and say, Lord, I choose to love you above this. I choose to love you above that. And from today, you become my topmost priority. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I need the every hour. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and make a commitment. I choose you above peace. I choose you above money. Above a blossoming career, above cars, above houses, above material things. I choose you above marriage. I choose you even above the anointing. Open up your mouth, let him hear you. I need you, I need I I Hey, last prayer tonight and then we'll worship the Lord and we are done. I was praying this prayer while I was in my house a few days ago. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't think there is anything like the grace to obey you. Because obedience is an act of your will. It's an act of the will of a man. So I prayed, I said, Lord, help me to be willing to obey you. At all times, at all costs. If you are here tonight and you want God to use you, and you want to see God move in your life, why don't you join me and pray that prayer in two minutes? Oh, Jesus. Lord, help me to be willing to obey you. Are you praying?
My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you My life is This is an allegiance that you are swearing You are taking an oath tonight It's not my own. your hands my life is not eyes closed everywhere lift your hands tonight two in one why we all stand everywhere if you know you are not born again you will not even understand what consecration is you need to give your life to the Lord you need to receive his life I'm coming to the family of God first or perhaps you are here and you used to be a Christian but truly you cannot make out of your life or you cannot say what you have is still a Christian experience or maybe you have meandered or you have veered off 
the path that God placed you and you want to rededicate your life again, you are going to come out. And then also, if you are here and you know that you love God, but up till recently, you have been battling with many other things that seem to take God's place in your life. That in reality, from your heart, you know that you are not truly living the right, the, the Christ life and you want to surrender completely. I want you to join this group and walk to the front. While I'm going to worship God tonight, I feel a very strong activity of angels here. And while I sing and we worship, if you are here and you want to say yes to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life, or you want to surrender the things that seem to take God's place in your life and reconsecrate to Him afresh. I want you wherever you are unashamedly, as you hear my voice tonight, unashamedly, you know this is your moment. Walk to the front and meet me. Why we worship Him tonight? It is time for God to have His way in our lives. It is time for God to be Lord of all. It is time for God to be our everything. It's time for the games that we have played to be over. And it's time for us to mean business. He said, come out from amongst them and separate yourself. And touch not the unclean things. He said, and I will be with you. As they come, you can clap for them. If you can hear my voice tonight, and you say, Apostle, I'm tired of playing games. I want to mean business with Jesus. I want to mean business with Him. Walk to the front. Walk to the front. Uh, front, or perhaps you are online and you want to rededicate or say yes to Jesus. I want you to repeat these words after me. Mean them from your heart. But I want you to lift your right hand as a symbol of total surrender. The presence of God is mighty here. There's such a holy atmosphere in this place. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my old ways and I forsake them. I thank you because you died to save me and today I receive you as Lord over my life in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father tonight I pray for these ones and I thank you because from today their past is over they now have a new life in Christ Jesus from today, they possess victory over sin and over Satan. I declare them born again by the authority of Scripture. And I declare that from today, they are consecrated to you. Their entire lives will be to serve you, to host your glory and to carry your presence all the days of their lives. Whatever that they surrender here tonight leaves them forever.